This is the world's lightest and thinnest foldable phone. I'm talking about, of course, the Tidal, the Honor Magic V3. It's now gone global. And this phone is just 9.2 millimeters when it is folded. When you unfold it, it's just 4.4 millimeters, the thickness, which is phenomenal considering the hardware it is packing. So this version that Honor sent out to me does have 12 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And the camera setup on the rear, well, a periscopic camera that's 3.5 times optical zoom. That's 50 megapixels, 50 megapixel main camera and 40 megapixel ultra wide. So some really good hardware in such a light and slim package. Okay, let's have a look at what we get with it. Now, it is packed with the phone open, as you can see. Most foldable phones will come like this. There are some magnets around the outside, so they just warn you not to put anything that's sensitive to magnets near that, and your typical warnings about no sharp objects near the screen. So I put the phone aside, and we'll go over that, of course, in detail in this review. And under here, we're gonna find these three pouches. So we have our cable, our charger. Now, it's their 66 watt charging that this does come with, 55 what wireless charging and you can see the charger the size of it is nice and small not too bad reasonably compact there the cable this will be their type a of course because we've already seen it's a type a port so that is our type a to type c cable and then here we do have the instructions paperwork and whatnot sim trade tool right there and case yes we do get a case this is our case so that's really good to see they're including that. So this is what it looks like. We have the two halves. So this is our front half and you can see some little adhesive tabs there. So it's gonna stick onto it. And then the back of it. Now look at the inside, nice texture here. This is some good soft material and it is going to protect the spine of our V3 and the surface material here, it's like a synthetic leather in this dark green. Looks really good. And what I like about this particular case is check this out. It acts as a stand, which is really good. So you can use this to prop the phone up. And it doesn't really add too much bulk. So first up, the inner screen. I wanted to look at this because it is uh, the star of the show, of course, having this lovely, wonderful, big display in the inside here. So 7.92 inches, 120 hertz, Dolby Vision support, 1600 nets is its peak brightness and you can see now in direct sunlight as I just move it about here, the sun's right on it, it's a bright day and I can make it out no problems at all. I have measured just over 1400 nits. You do need HDR content to be able to get and measure the 1600, which I've still not been able to measure. But the main thing for me is direct sunlight. I can see it, I can make it out. Now pulse width modulation on this screen, very, very good because it's 3840 hertz. This is the highest for any inner screen of a foldable phone. Even when I lower that brightness right down, we're not gonna see any banding, any flicker at the corner of the edge of my eyes when I sometimes look at some screens, I see a bit of flicker, a bit of shimmer maybe, I don't see it with this. Like when you quickly look away at something, then you look back at the screen, you may see with some of the other phones out there, a little bit of a possible flicker, no. Now, what about that crease? Because the crease, a lot of people talk about that, that you know, it's the thing that puts them off. This phone, you're probably looking at this going, oh, you can still see it. Yes, you can still see the crease, but it is the best crease that I have seen on a foldable phone now. It looks really good. Now, I definitely have to show you a comparison to the Galaxy Z Fold 6 from Samsung because look at that crease. I mean, look at this. This thing is, it's huge. It's super ugly. You feel it and they have not really improved it that much and it still falls and lags behind the Z Fold 6. Now, there's going to be a full comparison of Samsung's foldable up against the Magic V3 in the channel. So check out and subscribe for that. It should be up actually now too at the time I'll be publishing this if you're interested. So this screen, 120 hertz, of course, very fluid. We've got a 20 megapixel camera that supports 4K right there. Magnets in the outside here with this bezel, which is raised by about half a millimeter or so. So when you close it, there's about a millimeter gap between those screens there. They are not touching at all. Now it is really thin. This is the thinnest yet when folded, it's 9.2 millimeters. That is even thinner than some uh, traditional slab style phones out there. So that's incredible what they've been able to do here on it. And it's because they've slimmed down the steel hinge that's in this, they've slimmed down all the components, they've really worked hard on that. So volume up and down here, that is made out of metal, metal frame around here too. You can see the antenna lines. Capacitive always on fingerprint reader, which happens to work really well, just demonstrate it now. 
Oh, I need to scan. Okay, do that again. There we go. I have not really had any problems with it. It works nine out of 10 times. There will be the occasional little hiccup where it doesn't work at all, but super thin here. And then when you unfold it, it is just 4.4 millimeters, the thickness, which is incredible. So that is really good. Now, when you open and close it, the hinge does feel good. Okay, you can't bend it back any further than what I have now. We've got the dual loudspeakers, one here, one's on the other side, microphones, antenna lines again, IR transmitter, camera module, yes, it does stick out a little bit. So there's a lot going on here though. We have two 50 megapixel cameras, an ultra wide that's 40, a optical zoom camera that does have 3.5 times optical, optical image stabilization along with our main camera, which is really good, dual tone LED flash. And it's a camera module that um, I think it looks okay. I, I'm, I don't have any strong feelings about it. It's all right. The surface on the back here, matte, but it does show fingerprints a little. And I like this green color. It's almost like a British racing green color. So I think it looks very good. It does suit the phone. Now the outer screen here, looks like I've been doing some accidental touches. This outer screen here, this is 6.43 and it has a normal aspect ratio to it. So the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 6, you'll see in that comparison, still the screen I don't think is wide enough and that puts me off that phone quite a bit. Another 20 megapixel camera, bezels look good. We have the spine here, that's just the plain silver here with a the metal, there's no honor branding there. So it's a very good looking phone. I like it, and this screen, it's even brighter than the inner screen. This goes up to 5,000 nits, again, using it in direct sunlight, no problems, 120 hertz, Dolby Vision support, HDR10 plus support, pulse width modulation for Flickr, even better than the inner screen. They've been able to push this up to 4,320 hertz instead of the 3,000 uh, 800 we do have with the inner screen, 3840 hertz. So it's a very bright screen, great looking outer screen. So that Type-C port does support video out, and yes, we do have a desktop mode. So you can use a clone display mode if you want, which is just mirroring what's on the phone onto the screen, or my one that I'd prefer is the desktop mode. And this is very similar to competitors like Samsung's. So you can use the phone also too as a touchpad if you want to, or you can connect up a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard and move and manipulate your files on screen in a desktop-like environment. So on his UI is called Magic OS and it's based off Android 14. Now I have found that gestures work really well and I've got the apps drawer enabled, which I prefer. You don't have to use this, okay? You can just keep everything all widgets if you wanted to do so. So the way they have it set up here is that the inner screen is really in two halves. So you have the left screen, the right screen, any other additional screens that you may go along and add. And that means that when you fold the phone, it's always gonna be in the same place so you know where everything is, whether you've got it opened or closed. I do like this idea that it's not two different separate uh, ones with the layout there. I think it just makes things a little bit easier there personally. Now, hands down, very fluid. Uh, I cannot fault it, really. I have not seen any lag, unlike the Xiaomi uh, Mix Fold 4, which I saw a little spinning icon sometimes when you woke the phone out of a deep sleep state. Well, it does not happen here at all. That fingerprint reader, let's just test that again. It's working well. Now, it looks a little slow because of that loading in animation probably isn't the fastest. Now, there's a lot of things here in the settings uh, that I can show you, but not to make it, you know, too boring or anything like that. Not that it, you know, it isn't boring already, but there's uh, the foldable phones, okay? You can keep the external screen on. You can get it to turn off, and there are some settings with that. It has like a flex mode as well. You've got the force device orientation, uh, a global taskbar. If you want, you can have that on. You've also got the hover mode. Uh, and a few other little things in their parallel space that you can do. So those are some of the uh, specifics to being a foldable that are there available with Honor. Now, they've got a lot of eye comfort options here. Now, there's a lot in this uh, that are really handy, good for your health that no other brand seems to be pushing as much as Honor is at the moment. So we have the circadian night display. You've got your defocus eye care, natural tone, eye comfort, uh, the dynamic dimming, and it just talks about what I was talking uh, about earlier when we looked at the hardware, is that ultra high uh, frequency with a pulse width modulation dimming. So very good there. Now under the settings for the display, there's all the typical options. And I just wanted to point out by default, smart resolution is normally on. And the screen refresh rate, 120 hertz, 
uh, but it's normally on dynamic by default. So it will just change it on the fly when needed, as needed. But I prefer to put things on the top settings here because after all, I mean, that's what you're paying for. So why not use that? However, it takes a bit of a toll on the battery life. Won't be quite as good if you did have them on by default. So UI, performance, gestures, these displays, everything just absolutely top notch here. So pre-installed bloatware, when you first power it on, there are about seven apps. There's another two in here, seven or eight apps that I classify as bloatware. I wanted to report on this. It's quite lenient. It's quite light compared to some other brands that can go really overboard. So good to see that Honor hasn't just filled this whole page with pre-installed stuff that you have to spend time to remove, which is good. Now the battery life, this was set here to 120 hertz refresh rate and I turned smart resolution off. Now if you put the dynamic refresh rate and the smart resolution to have those on, which is normally by default, the result will be better than this. So we have a silicon carbon battery. It's 5,150 milliamp hours. And this result, I was expecting a little better, maybe about an hour or more out of it, but it was the resolution and the screen refresh rate that took a bit of a toll here. So seven hours and 47 minutes for a foldable with this battery capacity, I feel is a little bit behind what I expected. Real world use, six and a half to seven hours is what I'm seeing out of this. And that again is using 120 Hertz and not the dynamic refresh rate option. Charge time with a 66 watt hour battery was 49 minutes, according to my timer here. It took just 36 minutes to go from 2% to 76. But the last 25% or so does really start to slow down with the charge rate, which is of course normal. You find the same with uh, electric cars. Once you really go over 70, the charge rate does start to slow right down, but it's good speeds. Speaking of good speeds, very good here with our storage. So I've got 512 gigabytes of UFS 4.0 storage. Fantastic random reads. This is what's pushed the score up really high when it comes to the internal storage. Sequential read and writes both very good and our write speed too, but it's that one, the random reads, the most important, uh, very, very good score there. So great result and not a wonderful result, result here with Antutu. Version 10, we're looking at, I was expecting it to hopefully get 1.5 million for the score, but for some reason the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 here has underperformed a little bit and it's because of throttling. Now this chipset can do in slab style phones that are thicker, uh, can get up to around about two and even over two million points here. So it's a little disappointing and you can see why this has happened. When you compare to other phones that are slabs again, with the same chipset, they do do better here because Wildlife Extreme Stress Test, it runs for 20 minutes. It's from 3D Mark II, by the way, if you wanted to download it, test it on your own phone. Uh, you see that from the two minute mark, it's throttles noticeably, but it's about the eight minute, yes, eight minute mark there, it starts to really drop off. So the longer you game on this, the longer you push it, uh, especially with very demanding games, you notice the performance tends to drop off and it is over 40% performance dip you can see from its best to the lowest loop scores here. So it's one thing. And then you see the thermals uh, up to 46 degrees for such a thin phone. That's actually fine. I found the thermals to be fine. This is why the Antutu score is a lot lower than, than expected because they are clearly throttling that performance to keep the Magic V3 cooler. One of the key reasons to go for a foldable is of course that extra screen size you do get. You've got a lot more room. It's like having two displays here, especially when I have it in landscape. You can see now that's where the camera is. Obviously the big cutout there. So here I've got an ebook on the left. I decided to open up my uh, photos right here and have a look at some of the snaps I was taking and go through those. So you can resize this. It's not gonna be a, uh, a problem at all. And if I decided to, I could run some of these applications uh, as a floating window. So it's pretty straightforward. Most foldables gonna all be able to do this, right? So I can change that over now to a floating window and have the ebook there in the background. I can minimize and maximize this, swap between different ones here. I've got uh, Play Store open right there, okay? So that's all there in the background, pretty straightforward. So you've got all those extra things there. Now, the aspect ratio is not a thing that a lot of people kind of think about too much because of the screens all full right now. And if I swipe up there, I've got all my applications like 
pretty good, right? But Netflix, this is something that's going to be in, oh, I think it's like 21 by 9 aspect ratio or YouTube, which is 16 by 9. So let's just resume this and you'll see that, yes, we are going to have borders, okay? Top and bottom. Now, I can zoom in, but I'm missing out on a lot of content if I do that. So you're probably going to be watching things with the borders and YouTube would be exactly the same. You're going to have those big borders there. So it's just one thing to bear in mind. Oh, that's the windowed mode that Netflix does support. Now, Netflix, of course, that's full HD. That is all working, which is good. So very handy. You've got your split screen, your floating windows, all of that good stuff you have with foldables is there. And what about using like a flex mode? Yes, you can see that the hinge will allow us to have it like this. And it does work with things like YouTube which I've just brought up now. So we have uh, one of my videos is being played right here and I have then the keyboard. So I can go along and type the comments or whatever I want to in here, the keyboard that's gonna pop up, you'll see, oh, if I type in there correctly, and I can go along and type in this no problem, still watching that particular clip, which is great. So yes, the flex mode and I can angle it back quite a bit, it's not going to automatically spring down. So that's at quite a nice angle there. But anything over about there, then it wants to open itself up. And that's just how the hinge is. And lying it flat on a table like so, if you tap on this here edge, you're going to get a bit of that wobble because of that camera module. Now the phone does have dual loudspeakers. They're both located here. So when you are gaming especially, I would always have the camera at the bottom. That is also the heaviest side of the phone. Have it here. And that way that those two loudspeakers are free. They're not gonna be blocked by you gaming like this. Now the voice calls on this phone sound like any other flagship. Uh, I just wanted to mention anyway, because obviously it is a phone. Uh, they sound good, call quality is good. Haptics, uh, minor complaint from me. I think the haptics on this phone uh, could be a little bit stronger. They tend to be a little weak, those pulses, and there seems to be no setting to actually increase the haptics. It's probably because that mode is quite small considering how thin it is, it does make sense. So I'll give you a sample, yes, the typical sample I do use of what these speakers sound like, and I will say this, I do wish they were a little louder. They're fine, they're good but there are foldables out there with louder speakers. But overall, good bass, good mids and trembles. They are good, great sounding speakers even that we do have with the Honor Magic V3. I just wish they were a little louder. That's the only thing. This is just a minor nitpick. So gaming on the Magic V3, it looks absolutely stunning on the screen. The contrast you get out of it, very good. Response to touch, well, we have their game manager. If you swipe here from the top left, there's a few little options that you'll see that will come up. And the performance, well, it's pretty much like what we saw with my 3D Mark stress test, that in the beginning, the frames are very good, it's fluid, but it starts to throttle down a little bit. Like right now in this area of the map where I am, that I do most of my testing, I don't tend to see too many lags, but in certain areas of the map that are more demanding, big boss fights, you will notice a few frame dips. The longer you play, the more frame dips you will start to see. So the gaming performance I would rate as average for demanding games you will certainly see it and the phone it does get hot the magic v3 just around where the camera module is around here because it's so thin you feel it get up to and i have measured 47 degrees celsius 48 degrees celsius which is okay temperatures it is hot to the touch the frame here you do feel that heat but it's not as bad as other foldables like the xiaomi mix fold 4 which got up to 50 354 degrees Celsius, and in fact booted me out of this game completely because it overheated. But Honor throttles the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 so much that there's no chance of it overheating or having such issues. And here we are with the video performance of the Magic V3. So this is the outer screen camera. It's the same as the inner 20 megapixels, and it can shoot 4K at 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second. 
None of the cameras do support 8K. This is one thing that is missing compared to some other flagships that do have 8K where they're rear cameras. You don't get it here with the Magic V3, unfortunately, but I don't think too many people are gonna be worried about missing out on 8K. This is our ultra wide 40 megapixels, which is using electronic image stabilization. Quality seems to be all right, panning around. Shouldn't see any judder, any dropped frames. Main camera now. This has optical image stabilization, 50 megapixels. Quality looks a lot better than the ultra wide. Seems to be quite a bit sharper. And then we get two zoom options, which is two times, and then four times. And you can see with the four times, it swaps over to now using that 3.5 times periscopic camera, which is optical. And well, four times there's a little bit of digital there. And it does have optical image stabilization is what I wanted to say there. So tapping here on the castle, just to zoom in a bit, this is now seven times zoom. You can see the quality has degraded somewhat. I probably wouldn't personally go over about six. That's six there, and this is now back to five times zoom. So as mentioned just before, no 8K video support. 20 megapixel selfies, they do look great. And we do have the Heart Court Studio mode for portraits. That was just added with a recent firmware update. So you have different modes with this and you can get their classic, which is that black and white Heart Court Studio portrait. This is our ultra wide. It's fine, the contrast is, well, the blacks look a little bit too deep. Main camera now, plenty of details there. And then when I went over to the 3.5 times zoom camera, looks fine at first glance but i noticed that it seems to actually have missed the focus and it's a little hit and miss i've seen this a couple of times this is another zoom shot of my cat vera it's all right but the whites are a little bit overblown and when you use 10 times digital zoom it looks a little bit like an oil painting not amazing this is the super macro which is fine but it needs improvement really shots with the main camera especially flowers do look excellent and then this shot here, indoors of my kitten Snow, came out really well considering how dark the room was. It looks a lot brighter in this photo, but it was quite dark and there's still a lot of details. And the main camera is definitely the best camera out of all three on the rear. Another zoom sample, but this time out in the daylight, well, I was in the daylight before with the clock tower. However, this came out fine. So you can see it looks good, it's sharp, there's plenty of details. So it's just now and then with the zoom camera, I noticed that it can just miss the focus and be off slightly. Finally, low light photos with this phone do look in general pretty good. I mean, you can see from these examples I'm showing you now, there is a little bit of noise in the sky around some areas, but all up for a foldable phone, I think they're excellent. So there's a few other things that are definitely noteworthy that I have to mention that we have an IPX8 water resistance rating to this. For a foldable phone, that is really good. And it does have stylus support with the outer and inner screens. And there's even deep fake detection as well with the software. So if someone voice calls you with a video call and their face might not actually be their face. They may be using AI or beautifying to tweak it and make it look different. Would it alert you to that? Which is, I think, a handy feature to have. There's a lot of built-in AI stuff that I haven't covered, otherwise this video could go on for a very long time, but all up, fantastic screens, hardware, the thickness of it, how thin, I should say, it is not really that thick for a foldable at all. It's very good, it's lightweight. We have some bright, fantastic screens, both inner and outer, 66 watt charging, very fast internal storage, it's all checking out very good cameras too with it as well. There's just one con that I've discovered that if you intend to game a lot for long periods with very demanding games, that it will throttle. And we saw this with the AN22 score and the 3D Mark stress test that there's a bit of throttling that's happening with this. And it's similar to other foldables I have tested out. So we're not getting that full Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 performance down to maybe because of how thin it is, they've had to have throttled it down, but it's something that I believe that users out there should be aware of. But it's a very nice package indeed. Now I will have a comparison going in depth comparing the Magic V3 up against the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 6. So make sure you check out that video and I'll compare both of them, their hardware, their software, loudspeakers, cameras, battery life, all going to be covered. So stay tuned for that video. And thank you so much for watching this review.